and we'll go ahead and just start up Adobe Premiere. Now you should come up with um, the same project that we had last time. Um, you should have uh, the, the recent projects listed there. And you remember last week we did test one? If you're sitting at the same computer, it should, should put you back at test one there. Um, go ahead and click on test one. That will open up that file that we created last week. Um, everybody's everybody that's got one, right? Got something to work with, right? Um, I don't. I can't yeah, remember yeah, if I was there or here. Same. I think you were here, and I think Mark was yeah, there, there. But I just stole this one, so you'll be okay. Go ahead and just uh, just create a new a new project. Okay. Yeah. And again, just to go over it real fast again. <laughs> Oh yeah, please, yeah, yeah, definitely. If you guys need to swap this, flip the switches back there. Yeah, I flipped yeah. one over here. Is that open project or? Um, yeah, if you can open up the, uh, leave me one of those. Yeah, leave me one of those. The backlights on. There you go. That's good. Oh, there you go. That's good. Uh, the other way. And then there you go. Cool. All right. And I just want to check something here. Like the 5.5. I'm I'm getting used to six now. This is this is pretty cool. So, yeah. Has to get your big windows, to, you know, your the windows up top. Uh, I forget, Mark, I'm, I'm still the internet off of this one. So yeah, if I want to jump onto this one, might be better. Uh, Move on to a new project. Uh, like I said, you got your old project open. You got you got your old one. Kevin got your old one. So Chris, did you find your old one in there? Did say test one? Okay. Then yeah, we'll just go ahead. If uh, if you've got your other project, just go ahead and click on it. And uh, if you need to make a new one, we're just going to go ahead and create a new project here. And so we'll go ahead and just click on. Like I said, if you if, if you've got your old project open, you're good to go. If you need to make a new one, just go ahead and click on new project. Uh, make sure that it's putting it in the same location there, which is going to be the my videos folder. And you do that by hitting the browse button and browsing the libraries to video. And then go ahead and select that folder. Whoops. I just found brand spanking new. I was going to say, all right, so you've you pulled up uh, Adobe Premiere, mm -hmm. and we're looking at uh, the little new project window. So we go ahead and just hit new project up there. Right, I, I got all Oh, you got that, okay. Okay. Have anything. okay, there's just nothing in there. Yeah, okay, all right, cool. All right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and call this one test two just for sake of argument. All right. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating a little bottom third graphic. And what that is, this is going to basically show you the, uh, the relationship between Photoshop and Premiere, how the two work together. Um, so we've only got exactly about, about an hour from right now to, to kind of kick through this thing. So we're going to try to zip through this pretty quickly. Again, you know, it's just like, just like all my other tutorials. I'm going to throw you into the deep end and let you splash around for a little bit and get good and soaking wet. And then, then you're going to come out and have a whole bunch of good questions to ask. So um, again, we're going to kind of try to try to just fly through this. So... So do your darndest to kind of try to keep up. Like I said, if you have any questions at all, if I'm going too fast, say so. Let me know. I'll slow down. So, all right. So we've got our project file um, here, and we should still have our, our sample video loaded in here. Um, if you don't have your video loaded in, again, you can just double-click in the project window up here. You just click twice, click, click. And it's going to pop open. It's going to ask you, okay, where do we want to put that, um, put that video? And then you're just going to find the video... If you go out to libraries, click on video, and then find that sample video folder, and that's going to have that wildlife video in it. So you just click that, import it, and now you have that in your project file. And then what we'll do is we'll just grab that and drag it down to your timeline. So if you did this last time, um, you should already have your, your video down there in the timeline, right? Okay. So, yeah. So did you go ahead and import yours in, Mark? Uh, I, uh, I'm, my screen is just... 
There's oh. nothing in here that says source. It says source. It says no clips. Okay. So yeah, go, go ahead and go up to file, and then go to import. Okay. And then, like I said, over here on the right, you should see where it says favorites, desktop, downloads, recent, libraries. So go ahead and go to videos. And then go to sample videos. And then you should have the wildlife video there, yeah? All right, then just go ahead and hit open. All right. <laughs> we'll slow down. We'll catch up with you. All right, so. He's got a real weird configuration. I was going to say, let's take a peek here. Yeah. He has a six. Okay, oh, okay yeah, so let's go Windows yeah. and Workspace. And then go to WCS Okay, uh, so now they hit that little button right there. So now you're just going to drag the wildlife, click on the picture, and just drag it all the way down. There you go, perfect. And then you guys say, yeah. Uh, so what I go to Photoshop now? Uh, Premiere. So yeah, so we go ahead and open up Premiere. Let's see here. Yeah. So, all right. Now where do we find the um, the countdown? Oh, okay, that, that leader again. All right, so just to kind of reiterate what we did last week, uh, we went up to File, and we went to New, and then we went down here. There's a couple of different things up here I want to point out, too. There's a, a new title, a new Photoshop file, a new bars and tone. Bars and tone is going to be the color bars that normally used to put at the beginning of all of your videos. Uh, then we have black video, color matte, which is going to be any color that you want it to be, uh, HD bars and tone, which is going to be important, and then the universal counting leader, that's what we used the last time. So uh, if you just go ahead and click on universal counting leader, that's going to create a new new universal counting leader. So you just go ahead and hit OK. Sorry, go to new project. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go ahead and just do new project again. And then we want to just import that video, that, that uh, sample video wildlife footage. And again, that's going to be in their uh, sample videos. Time code. Uh, yeah. Is it under auto sample? Auto mm -hmm. samples? Um, let's see where you go. Very beginning. Yeah. Um, go ahead and hit browse, browse here because we want to change the file that we're going to put it in and make it videos there. And then go ahead and hit select folder. Yeah, just that right here. And then under where it says untitled there, let's just call this test one. Test one? Yeah, test one. Yeah. And then go ahead and hit OK. And then go ahead and hit OK. And then again, so you're OK. And every time you guys open up a new project, you have to go through those steps every single time. Create a new sequence, create a new, create telling it where am I going to put all my files together so we can get them all in the same place. So cool. All right, so now go up to a window up at the very, very top up there. There you go. And then go to work, or workspace at the very top. And then over and down to editing CS 5.5. One more down. There we go. That's it. There we go. All right, so now you need to file to new. And then universal counting leader there at the bottom. And just keep hitting OK. And one more. Cool. And then also go up to file and import. And go ahead and click on wildlife, and good to go. Now you can drag the wildlife picture down here to the timeline, all the way down there. Cool. Yeah. There you go. And then go ahead and hit, yeah, change project, change sequence settings. Cool. And then grab the universal counting leader and just drag it in behind it. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, all right. So what we should have is we should have. Uh, our wildlife video clip on the timeline somewhere, and we should have our universal counting leader also down here on the timeline somewhere. All right, so we're going to go ahead and scroll through your wildlife footage and find the scene. There's uh, there's the scene where a bunch of birds take off. I think it's the second the second scene there. The first one is the horses running on the beach, and then right after that, it's a bunch of birds taking off. 
So uh, put your uh, put your marker so that you're on on your timeline, right where there's just a bunch of birds there. So you have this kind of this this framing here. Already crop. Why don't we change it last time? Well, okay, that's all right. Yeah, so like I said, drive so wildlife down again and start over. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, just throw it at the end, and then just uh, just we'll just stack on to what we've got going here. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Right where the horses <clears throat> <end>, right. <clears throat> yeah. So right after the horses leave, and right where the birds start. All right. Okay. So this is where we've decided that we're going to put our title in. So this is where we want the title to end to end up at. So. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and open up uh, Photoshop. All right. So now we've gone over kind of gone over a little bit about Premiere again. We talked about uh, just to, just to run through it one more time. Last week we covered that this is the project window. This is where all the videos, your raw videos, end up or they start off with. And then we have the source monitor over here. And again, that's going to be where you're going to edit do a lot of your editing at. The program monitor is the big one up at the top right there. That's going to be the one that has the program out on all of your videos. That's what that's what you see is what you get kind of expression. Uh, then over here we have the effects window open up where all of our effects are hiding. And of course there at the bottom is a timeline. Okay. And then our little toolbar is kind of hidden in between right now. So all right. So again, that's Premiere. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the start menu, go to all programs. And then see if you can find Adobe Master Collection CS6. Or do we want the 64-bit or the regular? Uh, for this one, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do the 64-bit. Why not? All right, so there. And then uh, Adobe Master Collection. Uh, did you hit all programs? I just typed in yeah, Photoshop. Yeah, all programs. That works too. You can do that too. I got Adobe yeah, Acrobat. I'm not sure what it is. All right. Um, are you are you looking in Adobe or are you looking at Adobe Master Collection? There should be there should be two different three different folders there. Oh, Master Collection there. Yeah. Okay. Photoshop sixty four. All right. Sixty four bit. All right. All right. So we should be looking at a Photoshop screen. It looks pretty much like that. Everybody's kind of got that for the most part. Yeah. Cool. All right. Excellent. All right. The way this works is uh, Photoshop is a, is a uh, image graphic editing system, and it does everything. It's kind of like the the beginning and end of all things. Uh, uh, it, you can do literally anything in Photoshop. You can create graphics. We can create movies. We can create videos. We can we can do whatever. So. What we want to do is, again, we're going to create a bottom third graphic today. All right, so we're going to start from the beginning, which is File, New. And you can just go ahead and go up to File, New. And you're going to have, kind of like when you do the, the, the new project in Premiere, it's going to ask you, OK, you're making a new thing. So what? how big do you want this new thing? Where is this new thing going? What are we calling this new thing? So it's going to ask you a lot of those questions right off the bat. So in our new window here, let's uh, go ahead and, sorry. Uh, Try to switch this back over so it's not just my face on here. Yeah. All right, enough of that. So under Photoshop, we should have up at the very top there. It says name. It's going to ask you for the name of it. So we're going to call it BTM3, and that stands for bottom third. You can put the RD at the end if you want to. Bottom third. Yeah, BTM3, and again, that's just my personal way of doing it. You can call this whatever you want to call it, but I like that way. I know this is my bottom third graphic. And again, the bottom third, like I said, when you watch the news and they have the guy's name come up at the very bottom of the screen, it's got like a cool looking swooshy thing or whatever, that's a bottom third graphic. So it's just a little 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 name at the label at the bottom. Um, all right, so right underneath where it says name, you see the, the box that says preset. That's going to be the most important box here too because this is going to tell us what size, shape, uh, and design we're going to be doing. Um, because the file that we're creating, we're not creating something that's going to be printed out on paper, so we don't want the US paper or the photo settings. We don't want those. Ours is not going to be for the web. It's going to be not for a mobile device, but for film and video. So what you do is you go, you just click on that little down arrow for presets, and go ahead and click on film and video. Now then, underneath that, you're going to notice that all the settings change. Now that's going to change because it's going to give you the film and video settings. Now some of these things should start to look a little familiar to you after a while. Um, for our sake of argument, we're not going to change it. We're going to leave it on NTSC DV. So we're just going to leave it right there. And um, then we're going to go ahead and OK. 
All right, it's going to come up and it's going to tell you pixel access ratio is not correct for this screen and blah, 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 what do we do? What it's saying is on most TV screens, the pixels are not squared. They're kind of rectangular shaped. I know it's kind of hard to, like, if you were just, if you zoomed in and 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 zoomed in on your screen, like, just keeping closer and closer to your screen, eventually you're going to notice that there's not, there's not, like, solid colors there. There's actually a red dot, a green dot, a blue dot, and another red dot. And that red dot is sometimes a green dot or sometimes a blue dot. So there's those three colors make up everything. So what it's saying is, okay, the pixel ratio is, is different right now. Because, like I said, on a TV screen, they're rectangular. On these screens, they're perfectly square. So that's what that is. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. All right, go ahead and hit OK. <laughs> All right, once you hit OK, what it's going to do is it's going to put up this, this shape of our screen right here. The only reason I'm making a big deal out of it is because this rectangle is actually a little bit more rectangular shaped on a TV screen, whereas on this screen, it's kind of shrinking it in and making it square, kind of. So, again, that doesn't really matter, really, unless you're drawing circles and things like that, um, because you'll notice that your circles tend to be a little, little oval-shaped as opposed to being the perfect circle. So that's just one of those, one of those weird things. So but don't worry about it. All right. What we want to do is we want to create a bottom third graphic. All right. The way we're going to do this is we're going to create three different layers. The first layer is going to be the actual name with the person's name on it. The layer behind that is going to be a logo of something. And then the layer behind that is going to be just a big brown box. All right. So I'm going to do this relatively quickly. I'm going to do it real fast to show you how, what I'm going to do. And then we're going to go back and we're going to walk you through it. So if everybody just kind of, kind of eyeball my screen there for a second. Uh, I know that this is a brand new program to a lot of you guys. There's a lot of new tools in here that I'm going to just kind of jump through. But again, the idea is I just want to show you that these things exist so that you know they exist. And then later on, you'll, you'll go back and start using them and, and kind of get more features out of them. All right. Um, just to point out again, you know, we have a toolbar on the side here with a bunch of different tools. We have our selector tool, which is just like our V tool in Adobe. That arrow is kind of our general arrow to select everything. So again, just by pressing the V key on the keyboard, you're going to select that button. Uh, it's going to bring up that arrow. Underneath that, if we go all the way down, we're going to skip over some of the selections tools. We're going to skip over the eyedropper and crop. We're going to skip over the paintbrush, and we're going to go down to the paintbrush. Um, the paintbrush is right underneath that Band-Aid looking thing. And uh, what that is, is it's a paintbrush. So it allows you just to, you know, it's a paintbrush. So you just paint. You know, it does that. Uh, very cool. All right. Underneath that, we skip down the stamp brush. We skip down the paintbrush. We skip down the eraser tool. That one's kind of important. Um, again, if we, have, uh, if we have something drawn and we go to our eraser tool, it erases it. Pretty, pretty basic stuff here. All right. Is Underneath that. that um, yeah, I'm literally just control Z to undo. That's what I'm hitting when I, when I push buttons up here. But yeah, so uh, down below that is the gradient tool. We're going to come back to that. Um, and if you kind of just put your mouse on these things and just let it sit there for a second, it'll pop up and tell you what it is. So um, there's the blur tool after that. Then we have the dodge tool underneath that, the pen tool, the text tool, which we're going to be using. There's another little path selector tool, which is another looking arrow. And then the uh, ellipse tool, which yours might be on the rectangular tool right now. And then there's the hand tool and the magnifying glass. All right, the hand tool allows you to move around inside of your image. So, for example, if we draw something and we, uh, we zoom in on it. Let me zoom in on it. Where did the zoom button go? It doesn't move the zoom button. All right, so if we zoom in on something, we can use the, the hand button here to actually scroll through and actually look at the individual pixels of things. And again, remember I was talking about what is a pixel. Does anybody remember what a pixel stands for? Anybody know what pixel stands for? Uh, pixel it stands for, exactly, picture element. That's exactly it. So each one of these little, little grid-looking dots here is a picture element. So again, that's a, a pixel. All right. All right, I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place here. But let's, uh, let's, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create, like I said, layers. Layers are, think of them like panes of glass stacked on top of each other. So the, the top pane of glass, and we're looking down. So if we paint the top pane of glass black, we're not going to be able to see anything behind it because it's a pane of glass. It's solid black. We can't see through it. But if we take that same pane of tool and we scratch off some of that paint, we can see through to the layer below it, right? So the same thing, too. So it's just like, uh, like I said, just like creating a collage on a piece of paper. You know, you put down stuff as the background first, and then you put down something else on top of that, and then you put down something else on top of that, okay? So basically, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to use layers to do that. 
uh, to create a new layer, and again, I know I'm just shotgunning a lot of stuff at you guys right now, but just kind of bear with me. Uh, the layer window is going to be the very bottom right corner. The very, very bottom right corner, you should see a little trash can. And then next to that, you see this little post-it note looking thing with one of the corners folded up. That's going to create your new layer. So if everybody would, go ahead and click on that one time for me. And you'll notice that over here in your layers pane, you'll have the background layer, and now you have layer one. So everybody's cool. Get ready to get layer one. Cool. All right, here's where I'm going to just run through it real fast. I'm going to show you what we're going to do, and then we're going to go back and actually step you through it. All right, so follow me up here. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to turn the background layer off. And again, I'm just going to zip through this real fast, and we're going to go back and do all of these steps over again. So we're going to turn off the background layer, and you're going to notice this grid pattern comes up on your screen there. And that grid pattern shows you that it's translucent. So that means that everything is clear now. So we don't, if before we had a solid white box. So if we exported this thing, it would just export a solid white box. If we turn that off, now we have an invisible box, so now it would export nothing because there's nothing there. All right. So we're going to go ahead and click on layer one again. So again, our eyeball is turned off on the, the background layer, and we've clicked on layer one. Hmm? Oh, how did we get that? We did that by creating a new layer by going down here to this bottom thing and then uh, just clicking right here on that post-it note. Uh, right side, yeah, very right above the time there, you should see a little trash can and then a little post-it note. Okay. Yeah, if you click on that post-it note, that's going to create another new our new layer. Next to the trash can? Yep, right next to the trash can there. And like I said, every time you click that, it creates a new layer. Okay. All right. Layer 1 background. Cool. So yeah, so go ahead and click on layer 1. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and, um, like I said, this is the part where I'm just going to jump through real fast, show you what we're going to do, and we'll go back and step you through. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the rectangle tool to create a box at the bottom. Then we're going to use the paintbrush tool on another layer, and we're going to change the color of it, and we're going to use that to create a design. And then we're going to use the tool, the text tool, to, uh, to create a name. All right, so this is, this is all that we're going to do here pretty quick here. And we're going to make it look like that, okay? So this is what we're, that's effectively what we're trying to create right now. Just something that looks something like that, okay? So that's all we're going to do. So let's walk through that steps real quick again. All right. All right. So you should have at least one layer, correct? Everybody's got one layer? Cool. All right, so layer one. So go ahead and click on layer one, and you'll know that you're on layer one because when you, when you, where you see layer one, it's highlighted. If you're on the background, that background's highlighted. If I click on layer one, layer one's highlighted. So, is, uh, does yours have? Does yours look like that? Yeah. There you go. So you see this little eyeball here next to? Uh, okay, you got it. All right, cool. All right, so now we're on layer one. Everybody's clicked on layer one. Yep. All right, and then uh, go over here to your toolbar and find above the little hand tool. There's a box that it should be the uh, like I said, it says the the rectangle tool. All right. That's also the same as pressing the U key on the keyboard, just to make a point. All right. Now then, the uh, down below that, you're going to see there's two little color boxes here. Now, I know again, this is I know this is a lot of stuff I'm throwing at you guys, but again, this is all basic functionality. You're, you're going to you're going to know this stuff by the end of the six weeks, so you'll be good. Um, like I said, underneath that, there's the color button. If you click on the top box, you can pick whatever color you want, and I leave that up to you. And you select the color by clicking on the actual color box up here. And then you can change the hue by sliding this little bar up and down over here. Okay. So like I said, you go ahead and pick whatever color you want. Um, try to pick something a little darker, just because, like I said, we're going we're to have light color text on a dark color background so that it pops. So uh, go ahead and just pick whatever color you want. And once you've got your color selected, you'll see that box down there is now changed to another color. Mm -hmm. Cool. And we should still have. Foreground, I'm sorry. Foreground color. Yes, sir. Yeah, just whatever color you want it to be. And uh, like I said, we're going to click on the little box for the rectangle tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to about the reason they call it the bottom thirds is because it takes up the bottom third of the, the screen. So what we want to do is we want to just draw a box here just by clicking, holding the mouse down, and sliding the box across, and that'll create a box. And we want it to be about the bottom third of our screen there. So again, I just did that. Just just move your mouse over here to the top right somewhere, about where you want the box to start. Click, hold it down. Uh, control Z to go back. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Can you change the size to the box? Um, like I said, if uh, resize it, um, just by clicking the V key to go back to your regular arrow tool. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, well, it's not good. It should just be the color that you, you drew it at. Yeah? Let me see. You see how where you pick here change the size of which color you get. Uh, so that changes, you know, so you can change the color down there. Yeah. So you make it lighter, darker. Yeah, I got sorry now. Crop for you. I don't know how that's good. Oh, it's okay. Uh, we just do control, hold down control, and tap the Z key. Yeah, which one? Z. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I'll tell you what, let's hit enter. And then now control Z. There you go, and do it one more time. Oh, okay, we'll keep going. And then uh, hit the escape key up the top right corner. Control Z one more time. Okay, for uh, for Photoshop, it's kind of weird. Um, do me a favor, everybody. Go up to the word edit up top, and you'll see where it has undo, and then also has step backwards. So that's the biggest difference with Photoshop. Uh, with Premiere, you can just keep undoing and you just keep backing up. But in Photoshop, you can back up one step, which is what the undo button does. So if you want to back up multiple steps, then you have to do the step backwards. And to do that, you do Control and the Alt button, and then the letter Z. And that will jump back several steps. So so control Alt Z lets you go multiple back. Go. Yeah, just keep going back. And again, if you go up to the word Edit up at the top. You'll see where Control Z is listed up there as as uh, undo the last thing, and then you'll see where it says step forward, and you'll see where it says step backward. So step backward is going to be what eventually actually takes you back. So My, uh, the step forward on yours is dark and mine's not. Right, because I because I did something and then went back, so it has it has forward. Hmm? I don't have the textured. Oh, oh, I missed it. Here it. Okay, cool. So yeah, so just turn that little eyeball off on the background. There you go. You got it. All right. So now you're on layer one. All right. Cool. So we're gonna draw that box again. So how many people have the box on there? Cool. A couple of us. All right. So uh, so we're gonna go ahead and click on uh, right above the hand tool there. Like I said, the move tool, um, which is the the rectangle tool there. And you're just gonna click on the rectangle tool and again just draw a box there. No. Resize it. Okay, to resize the box and everything too, um, because when we drew it, we're drawing a shape, so it's a, it's a rastered shape. So, in all honesty, for for the sake of argument, don't worry about it. Do you have a box? Yeah, just. A then box. you're good. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, don't even worry about it. Yeah, do you get a box? So you say, <laughs> that works. Let's see, is it like a big line? Uh, yeah, that'll work. That'll work perfect. Um, I'll tell you what. Actually, let's go ahead and Control Z to back up one. Alright. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, hit the trash can. And what it's going to do is it's going to delete them for you. And we'll say, yeah. And then trash can again. Yeah. And then trash can again. Yeah. Alright, so now we're going to click a new layer here. The one next to the trash can. There you go. Now go ahead and click on the little, uh, yep, got the rectangle tool selected. You're good to go. So start right here. Click, hold it down, and then drag all the way down to that corner over there. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, come, right, come right over here and click one time for me. Right here. Yeah, now we'll get rid of the mouse. You can click just to click. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, hit cancel. All right, now just click right here and hold the mouse down. Yeah, all the way over. Right, all the way off screen. Yeah, that works too. There you go. And then move the mouse all the way down. Mm -hmm. You keep going all the way down. Yes. There you go. Cool. Yeah. There you go. All right. So we got a box. We got a box. Got a box. Got a box. Everybody's got a box. All right. Cool. All right. So now go ahead and create a new layer again just by hitting that, that new layer button down there in the bottom right corner. And again, right next to the trash can. Cool. And now this time what we're going to do is we're going to go to the paintbrush tool. 
And that's going to be by hitting, you can hit the B key on the keyboard, and that'll pull up the paintbrush. Or you can just go over here and click on the paintbrush itself. All right. And then now go ahead and pick a different color than the one that we've chose before. So you're just going to click on the color box and just pick something completely different. Do something manly. See how we did purple for our other color. All right. So once you've clicked on your paintbrush uh, and you've picked a new color, just go ahead and, without getting fancy, without being really involved in it, just make a line that goes across your box. And again, you know, just paint a line that goes across your box. Doesn't have to be fancy. Doesn't have to be pretty. Make sure that it, is, that it is on a new layer. So you should have a rectangle layer, and then you should have another layer that has your stripe on it. So layer two is where we want our stripe. Correct. So we have, we have a rectangle, and then we have another layer that has a stripe on it. All right. So everybody got a stripe? Cool. Nope. nope. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Change the color here. Oh, so here, uh, your, your rectangle is, is over top of it. So just kind of layer and slide it up one. Just draw it on the middle. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Put a rectangle layer and bring it down. Um, gotta go in between the two layers, though. Yeah. You'll see like a black bar. There you go. There we go. There it is. Okay, there it is. Yeah, so again, think of like stacks of, stacks of glass. So if you yeah. have, we have that box. Yeah. Disappear. Yes, exactly. So just click down here, and let's pick a completely different color. Yeah. Come up to the and now, there you go. Cool. All right. So we've got we've got something that looks something like that, right? Everybody cool? Yeah. All right. One more step. This one's easy. All right. We click on the uh, the new layer again. Make another new layer. All right. And now we're going to click on the little T that's over here, right above the, uh, right underneath the pen tool. And again, that's the uh, the horizontal type tool. Again, you can get you can access that tool by pressing the T key on your keyboard, and that'll open up that little window. Now this is weird, so follow me on this. Uh, text is works off of two different ways. There's you can draw a text box, and then whatever the box that you drew, that's where the text is going to go. Or you can put text on a line. So you can draw a line and then click on it and then put the text on the line. So if you want to draw like a curve, curvy shaped line and have the text follow your curve, you can do that. But what we want to do for sake of argument today, just to make it easy, is we want to do a text box and just put the text in that box. So the way we're going to do it is we select our text tool just by clicking that T. And then um, you're going to notice these blue lines in here. I never did mention those. Um, those are called your title safe lines. And what those do is those tell you, okay, on a regular TV screen, it's going to cut in to the innermost square here. So this, this box that's here in the middle, that's the only thing you're going to see on a regular TV screen. That, that's going to be the edge of the screen right there. All this extra stuff is going to be lost, basically. It's going to bleed out. So they call these bars, these lines, they're called title safe lines. So as long as your title stays inside of these lines on that innermost box, you'll be okay. You'll, you, it'll show up on any screen. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box. Just uh, move your mouse so that you're on the Which inside. Which the mouse again? I mean the box. Oh, um, like I said, you're, uh, you're on the text tool. Yeah. That's the T. The T. Yeah, and uh, so like I said, so right now, right now when, it's, when you pull that tool up, it's designed to go for the text box. Okay. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to click, hold the mouse down, and slide a box just like how you made the, the box, the background box. But you're going to make this box just inside of the, the blue bars there, just so, that it's, just so that it falls inside of your graphic Things there. Things you can get inside the box. Correct, correct. And then go ahead and just type your name in there. And you're going to notice that it probably came up really, really small. It's probably really little, right? You might not even be able to see it. All right. Once you've typed it in, though, I want you guys to go ahead and select that. And the way, the easiest way to do that is pressing Control A, and Control A selects all. All right. So that's going to highlight Did your you name. That the color you selected is what your text is going to be. I was just going to say that too. Yeah. And we're going to show you how to fix that too. So once you've got it highlighted like that, once you've got your name selected. Again, just type your name in. Once you've typed your name all the way in, go ahead and press Control A. And again, that's going to select everything. So once you've got everything selected, you've got, got your name selected. Cool, cool, cool. All right, up at the very, very top row now, because we selected the, the text tool, the top toolbar is now changed to all the text selections. Um, the first little thing I like to point out is the color box up here. You'll notice that color of your text box. 
So if you click on that box, you can now change the color of your, uh, your text independently. Uh, you also notice over here next to the, you have the, the, the font type, so what type of font it is, and then you'll also have the size of it too. So yours probably is set to 12 right now. Go ahead and kick that number up into the 20s, maybe the 30s. And again, just by clicking on it and clicking a higher number until your name takes up pretty much that whole screen. So again, I'll let you just go ahead and pick a different font. I don't care what it is. Go ahead and pick a different size just so you can see how the size works. You, know, you can see that, okay, this is how I make it bigger, smaller. And go ahead and change the colors on it too. All right. So I'm going to just kind of just walk around and see if we've got, got that. we got that. Bring it down to the bottom. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so I just originally when we drew the box, we just drew the box smaller. We can do it bigger. That's fine. So, what we do is we're going to click on it. And then, yeah, click on it. Yeah, click on it. Right. As soon as you click it, start getting There you go. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Okay, so now for sake of argument, now you've got, you've got. Remember, I said we're going to create three new layers, and we've got, we got our three layers right here. We got our background layer here. Now then, if you're the only person that's working on this, and this is the only person that's going to see it, then this this next step really doesn't matter. But if you're going to be sharing stuff with other people, which I highly recommend, I, I highly recommend labeling your stuff. So it's very important that you label your stuff. So if you would go over here to where it says rectangle over here. I mean, you should have that one that one layer that says rectangle. You're gonna right click on it, and the very very top option is supposed to be. That's cute. They changed that. Okay, sorry about that. So you're going to double click on the title itself, and when you do that, it's gonna allow you to rename it. So it says rectangle one right now. I just want you to call that box B O X. And again, to do that, so for layer one, that's gonna be the layer that's the stripe. I want you just to double click on where it says layer one and call that one line. And then the top one there should be your name, right? So that you have box, line, and your name. Now then just to make a, make a point here, uh, you'll see that eyeball that's right next to, like if you go to the line, you see that eyeball that's right there next to the where it says line? If you click that eyeball, that'll turn that layer off. And if you click that eyeball, it'll turn that layer back on. So if you're not sure what layer that I'm working on, you know, if you're not sure about the layer that you're working on, the best way to check it is just to click that little eyeball. So if you blink the eye, that's what I always say. That way I know, okay, that layer is that piece. That's the thing that I'm changing. I know that this layer is this piece, and I know that just by clicking on it and changing it. I know that this layer is this piece. So, all right. Cool. So everybody's got theirs. It should be their name at the top, line, and then box, and then it says background at the bottom, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's important because, like I said, now if you uh, if you if you get them out of order again, for example, if we grab our our name layer, if we put that underneath our box, it disappears because it's behind our box. We can't see it. So if you ever if you ever doing something like uh, who just had that problem, Chris, you just had that problem, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're like, oh, crap, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Why isn't it showing up? Make sure that that layer is the, the topmost layer. Otherwise, you won't see it. All right, so we should, again, we should have, you should have your name, you should have line, and then you should have box, and then you should have background. What I want you to do is go ahead and right-click on the background, and you're going to see that the option for it, the top option is layer from background. And what that's going to do is go ahead and click that. That's going to literally separate that background layer, and, and so now it's no longer your background. Now it's just another layer. So we want to get rid of it. So now when we've done the layer from background, we're going to hit the little trash can in the bottom corner. And it's going to say, are you sure you want to delete layer zero? Say yes. And now you should have only your name, the line layer, and the box layer. So background's gone. Then. Background's gone completely, right? Be cool? Cool, cool, cool? Mm -hmm. All right, hot dog. This is the fun part. All right, go to file and save. Now then, where we save this is crucially important because where we put this file is where Premiere is going to be able to find it. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we go to our libraries folder over there on the right there. You should have is recent places save, documents. Save as, uh, either way, because we haven't saved this thing yet at all, the save and save as are the same button at the, for the very first time. So we have because we haven't saved this file at all. Uh, all again, save. Yeah. Yep, and it should pop up with a Save As window here. Again, go to Libraries, go to your Video folder, 
And then you should see that sample folder as well. You know, don't click on it, but you should see that sample folder. Actually, yeah, you can open up the sample folder. And we can put this in there. And now you should already have, it should say file name. It should say bottom third PSD. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so go ahead and just hit save. You do what you say. I've got two of them. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so yeah, we want to make sure that we're in the uh, samples folder. Yeah, you're in you're in the samples folder, so you're in the right place. So go ahead and hit save. Yeah. So it doesn't matter which one. You got high. Uh, well, you're you're actually those are folders inside of this folder. Oh, okay. So you're you're good. So. I'm in the library. Mm -hmm. You want to click on that? Yeah. That's what you Alright. This one just says so cool. turning off maximum capability. Right. And again, that has to do with that pixel ratio thing I was talking about at the beginning. So don't worry. Just hit yeah. Okay. yeah, just hit OK. All right. So now, now let's go ahead and go back to Premiere. Okay. So go ahead and click on back in Premiere. Do we shut this down? Um, leave it open. Leave it open. I'm going to leave it open. And I'll just switch over to Premiere. All right, and now that in our project window, again, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can go to File, Import. We can press the Control and tap the I key, or we can just double click in our project window right here. And now it's going to open up, and because we've set our project folder to be this sample video folder that we've been working out of this whole time, again, that's why every project should have its own folder. It's very important. Uh, you'll should see, you should see the bottom third graphic, the PSD that we created. Did everybody see that? Go ahead and double click on it, hit Open. And you're going to get a series of options. It's going to ask you a bunch of questions. Merge all layers. Yeah. Right. Do we want to merge all layers? Do we want to bring them in individually? Or what do we plan on doing? For this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to do merge all layers. And with that, and then go ahead and hit OK. So you can hit import. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So you hit import, and then you hit the, the, the bottom third thing. It's going, to, it's going to come up and say, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? All right. So now you're going to notice over here on the top right, over here, just to point out again, we have the wildlife video clip, and it has that logo of a film strip and a little uh, waveform monitor, which is that little squiggly line that sound makes. Uh, you should have sequence one in there somewhere, and then you should also have bottom third PSD as a as a Photoshop file. Did we change that to scene one? Maybe we did. I think I think yeah, I think we did that last week. So. All right. So you have, but that's your sequence. So. All right, so go ahead and just click on your bottom third. Again, always click on the picture, not the words. Click on the picture and drag it down to your timeline. And make sure it's on video three, one of the top video tracks. So it's above your other video. Again, just like panes of glass. And now you'll see that you know, it drops in there, right? Where do you put it on? Mm -hmm. Right on your video? Mm -hmm. right yeah, just drag it down to the timeline there. Mm -hmm. And then just, oh. So now you don't want to put it on the video, you want to put it on top of the video. So, so okay. it's on a separate track there. I know you can yeah. Z? Um, either one, yeah, exactly. As long as it's above it. To get the uh, control, control and Z, yes, sir. You got it. And then, like I say, yeah, just drag, um, go up there. You see how you have that, that big, one yeah, is. that one. Go ahead and drag that one and put it on the top track there. Yeah, right up there. Good That's turn. fine. Perfect. Excellent. All right, so now then yours should be looking like, kind of like mine. It's kind of not fitting exactly. So what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and um, make sure that you have the, the arrow tool selected. Again, you can just press the V key on the keyboard to get that. And then on your timeline, down there at the bottom, down there, click on where it says bottom third. Mm -hmm. Just click on it one time. And then now up here where the source monitor normally is, we're going to click the other tab up here, and it's going to be the effect controls. So go ahead and click effect controls. All right. Now you see there's an option for motion, opacity, and time remapping. Let's go ahead and hit this little triangle to open up the motion tabs. Oh, um, are you click, did you click the effect control button up here? And did you click on the, uh, the bottom third down here? I clicked it once. Mm -hmm. Click that once, and then go up to effect controls. Still not? Hmm. All right. Let's see. That's the button right Oh, OK. I clicked it right in the dead center. There you go. So, there you go. so there's difference between, if you click on the ends of the clips, you're going to be modifying the signs of it. So you always want to click the dead section of it. Alright, sweet. Alright. So, motion, position, scale, rotation. These things are, remember how we were talking about 3D space? There's only three ways you can move something. Yeah, up, down, left, right, or forward, and back. That's it. Those are your options. 
And then you can take and you can start to twist things and rotate them. And then you now, now you think about, okay, if I can move it forward and backwards, I can also twist it forward and backwards. I can also rotate it forward and backwards. I can also, so it starts getting a little involved and everything, but we're going to keep this simple. So right now we're only working with X and Y because we're not talking about 3D space. It's only going to be, able, the only way you can move that box is up and down and left and right. That's it. There is no forward and back. It can't come off the screen. It, it doesn't do that. But to fool it into looking like it's coming at you, the trick is you mess with the scale. You just make it bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that. We're going to make the scale bigger. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can modify this to kind of just explain it the easiest way. Uh, go ahead and just click on where it says 100 there. Just type in 200 and press enter. Uh, again, under the where it says scale, where it has the yellow numbers there. Under motion? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, under motion. Hit that little yellow tri that triangle to open up the motion tab. And then you should see scale. It's not opening. Oh, let's see here. This tab up here. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Um, oh, let's see. Oh, we got to click on. You're on the video, so we got to highlight the uh, PSD there. So you click on that. Yeah, Inbox. Right. Those ones. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just click that. Uh, oh. oh, we're on our magnifying glass tool. We're going to get an arrow tool. Now click on Inbox. You got it. All right. Now we'll get that motion tool. This one. Yeah. Uh, yep. The little yellow, yellow triangle or the triangle next to it there. Sorry. Uh, keep going over. This. One more. That thing. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So now you see where it says scale? Yeah, just click on those yellow numbers and go right to 200. 200? Yep. All right. The way that these work is uh, the position is going to be left and right and then up and down. So the first numbers, if you click on them, if you click and hold the mouse down on the numbers, if you click on the numbers and slide it left and right, you'll see that it moves left and right. I'm just holding the mouse down right now. So when you, as soon as you let go, that's where it's going to stay at. The next set of numbers, if you click on them and move it left and right, it's going to move it up and down. So you click, drag it, it goes up and down. Cool? All right. So same thing with the scale. If you click on the numbers, move it left and right, it's going to make it bigger and smaller. So go ahead and move it so that you can get it so it's right at the bottom of your, you know, the bottom of your screen. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just, just so it's on the bottom. And so that we can see your line and we can see your name. All right. Now, here's the cool part. All right, here's the coolest part about Photoshop and Premiere, how they work together. This is why Avid and uh, this is why Photoshop or Adobe is better than Avid. This is why Photoshop is better than uh, Final Cut Pro. This is, this is why we use Adobe stuff, because Adobe stuff works together. And that's the most amazing thing. All right, at the very bottom of your screen, you should still have the tab for the Photoshop file still open. All right, what I want you to do is go to the where the line tab, or the line layer, I'm sorry. And then go ahead and select your paintbrush again. Now, it's probably still on the color that you drew originally with the paintbrush. So go ahead and let's pick a completely different color. And now then, let's just kind of add into our shape. Just add along your stripe there. Just add something to it. Doesn't matter what. Just we're just trying to change it to, to make a point. And then go ahead and go to File and just press the Save button. Again, that's the same as pressing the Control key and tapping the S button, the S key. So again, Save. It's going to say, Hey, yo, whoa, you're using this. Do you want to? Do you want to keep it? You say yes. And now when you click back on Premiere, when you click and open Premiere, it automatically changed it in Premiere for you. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, we're going to, we've got four different restaurants we have to go to. We have to make these four different, four different movies or four different commercials for four completely different restaurants. But what we can do is we can create that bottom third graphic and we can put the name, the restaurant, the title, the phone number, you know, the menu options, whatever. We can put all that information in there. And then when we want to change it, we can just change it for this one's for TGI Friday. So we put the TGI Friday's logo in there. We change the title. We change the text. Save it. Export it. Blah, blah. Go to put the next one in. Put the sticky shakes graphic in there. Put that in. Blah, 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 blah. And it just loads it and translates it over. So I go ahead and bounce back and forth between Photoshop and Premiere. And just go into Photoshop, make some changes on it, save it, and then go back into Premiere there. Cool.
up yeah. here, I, I hit this first, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you just need to cover this, and then what there? Oh, okay, because we're on the bottom line layer, so you want to be on layer two there. Because oh. yeah, again, that's the very bottom layer, so you're painting in the very, very back. So now when we paint. There we go. All right. Cool. All right. Now this is the most important feature because, like I said, this is what's called the dynamic link, and that is exactly what it is. It's a really dynamic link. It links everything together. Uh, once um, I do that, mm -hmm. once I oh yeah, once you made your changes, go ahead and just go to file save, and file save, and then now just open up Premiere, and because you saved that file, Premiere goes and checks and says, "Hey, is it? This is new. I'm gonna look at it, and it checks it and brings in a new file for you." You want to save anyway, so set. Yeah, yeah, so we would say yes. Yeah. Very cool. All right, so that is pretty much the basis of our class for today. Um, but I want to show you guys just a couple of things in Premiere, or I'm sorry, back into Photoshop. Um, go ahead and click on your box layer again. And you're just going to click on the box layer over here. And now you're going to see that your box layer looks a little different than your text layer, and it looks a little different than the line layer. Um, it's got like it's got the shape looking thing icon in it, and that's because it is a shape. It's not it's not an actual thing. It's like it's a block, a piece of magic. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's it's not rasterized. So in order to rasterize it, you right click on that layer, and which one? The second layer. Uh, the, the the box layer. Box layer. Mm -hmm. You right click on it. again. The right click's the button you don't normally use in the mouse, and you go to where it says rasterize layer. And what that means is it basically just prints it out. You know, so as opposed to having all the information to be able to change that box and make it do all kinds of fancy things and be a, a graphic box, we want it to just be a layer that has that shape on it. So we're going to rasterize the layer. And when we do that, you'll see that now our graphic for the box layer kind of matches the line layer. It's just It looks like a, a miniature version of what we're looking at, you know, like a thumbnail. All right. So now just to make a point, um, Let's go over some cool stuff here. All right, I want to show you the gradient tool because that's one of my favorites, and a lot of a lot of let me rephrase that. Everything has a gradient in it. Uh, the way the sky on the horizon when the sun's setting, and you have that strip of pink down below, and then there's that orange stripe, and then there's that blue stripe, and then there's the blue sky up above. That's a gradient. So it's just a, a fade of a color. Um, Trying to get a good example. If you notice, if you look at the ceiling, uh, there's the the gradient from the back row where all the lights are, and then it gradients to darker as it gets up to the front. Um, if you look up, like I said, everything gradients are everywhere and they're in everything. And as soon as you can start to see them and start to recognize them, then you start you start to be able to become a better graphic artist because you'll you'll notice the elements that everything is made up of. All right, so what the hell is a gradient, Mike? A gradient is, again, a gradient tool is going to be listed uh, right here underneath the eraser. And it looks like a little box where it's going from, from dark to light. Um, and again, you can access that by pressing the G key on the keyboard. All right. And what I want to show you guys is how to change the colors of a gradient. So um, once you've selected the gradient tool up here, you're going to notice that up here you have this little yellow looking little bar where it goes from light to dark. Mm -hmm. If you click on that one time, it's going to open up this new new gradient editor window. And there's a couple of different presets loaded in up here. You can kind of see how this kind of works. But basically what it does is it picks a color, and it goes from one color, and then it automatically adjusts to another color. So, for example, if you click on the black to white one, you'll see that there's a black box and a white box. So by changing this color, the color that's in the box here, I can change the way the gradient works. So if I, instead of going from black to white, we want it to go from black to blue. I can click on the color here, click on the uh, the blue button, and now it goes from dark to blue. If I want it to go from yellow to blue, we just click on the color over here, change the color. And again, I just kind of want you guys to get used to being able to do that, just being able to pick the color that you want. The uh, mm -hmm. bottom section of that gradient editor is grayed out. Um, I didn't get that either. Yeah, mine's too. Let me see. Oh, well, you, know, you gotta hit the. Uh, you have to hit one of these to get back. Yes. So yes. Before, uh, I, yeah. before I get that, I got nothing. Exactly. Uh, let me show you here. Uh, yeah. So you clicked on the gradient tool, and you clicked on the the color up at the top up there. Uh, pick a different different color up here. 
Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. This box down here is grayed out. Okay. Yeah, you have to pick the color, either the beginning color or the end color. And that's the bottom little box there. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, one of my favorite ones is uh, it's underneath the black and white gray box there. And it's this one that has a blue with a white and then like a brown. That it's it's really cool. If you look at it sideways, if you turn your head sideways and look at it, it's it's a horizon line. Yeah, it looks like it looks like you're looking at a long, you know, like the desert. It's just a big brown, gray, long desert, and then there's the blue sky. Yeah. All right. So again, just wanted to point some of these out. Um, go ahead and click on the black to white one. What's up, boss? Come on in, man. Yeah. And um, for this one again, just go ahead and uh, pick pick kind of a blue color as a darker color. And then kind of a kind of a, a whiter color, kind of a lighter color blue for the lighter color. So it goes from a dark color blue to a lighter color blue. Cool. And then go ahead and press OK. Now then, the way that you draw this is is kind of a big important thing too. There's several different ways to, to make a gradient. Uh, for example, if we go a long ways, you end up with just a gradient that goes from, from where you start clicking to where you end up clicking is going to be how it goes from the dark color to the light color. I'm sorry, I should say from the first color to the second color. I shouldn't say from the dark to light. Because depending on which way you do it, it's going to, to, to change the way that it gradients fades from. So again, where you start clicking is where color one starts. Where you stop, where you let go of, that's where color two starts. So if we go from, you know, from dark blue to light blue, or we can go from, we make that line really long, we go from dark blue to light blue. Okay, kind of all getting that? Yeah. No? <clears throat> all right. Uh, and again, I'm on the box layer. I'm just drawing colors straight in this way. Oh, yeah. Okay. So on this That's side, we want, we want blue. Sure. Have a dark color. Okay. And how do you get, how do you change this? Uh, the other box. There you go. And then match one. Okay. It's because it looks like the same color, but it's trust me, it's different. Uh, I'm going to do a real light color. And like I said, where you start the very first color is going to be where you start clicking, and the last color is going to be where you go. So you start right here, cross, yeah, and then click here in the middle, click all down, slide over, and let go. So you see that's where the dark color is, that's where the light color is. So go the other way down. Start at that side, cut this one. Go from bottom to top. All right. Uh, so yeah, so just click, click right here, just click. All right, then click, hold it down, slide. There you go. And that way. Yeah. So cool. where you start, where you stop. So now click over here and go this. You go diagonally. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Go from top to bottom. Cool. All right. Uh, now then, just to point it out. So that's that's if you're doing a linear gradient, and that's going from point A to point B. Um, up here next to the color. Select tool up there, you'll see that there's the, the linear gradient tool. And then next to that is like a little dot looking thing. And what that does, that does like a, a circle, like a sunburst. Okay, so it works kind of the same way. Where you start is going to be the middle. And then you, where you click outward, that's where it's going to blend to the other color. So just kind of draw a couple of those just to get, get the feel of that. And again, you can start way off screen and stop way off screen and you get kind of a more of a subtle blend out of things too. The longer you draw your line is how, how far the... Exactly, exactly. The longer you draw that line, the smoother your gradient will be. Now to put that in the bottom third, we have to draw a tri uh, rectangle the size that we had. Right. And then right, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do that real quick. Uh, go to the... Uh, there's the... There's the first one is the, the radial one that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the second one is the radial one. And the third one is kind of a weird one. I don't really like this. I've never never found a good use for it. But you get you get what it does. I mean, it's just kind of weird. It. Yeah, it's like a clock or something. You know, it starts from one and goes around. It's, um, it's good for when you're putting it directly on a line of visibility. There you go. So yeah, so doing doing you know, yeah, marking what, outlines. What he said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So All right. A center point though. Right. Yeah, right. There you go. Um, the next one again is the reflected gradient. This one I use all the time because if you start in the middle and go up to about the top of your thing and let go, you'll see that it creates a, it creates like a bar basically. It's a really nice smooth bar there. Um, again, yeah, just try different angles, different sizes, you know, different widths, you know, big and thick, nice and small. 
And of course, the last one is like a little diamond box looking thing, too. All right. So I'll tell you what, go ahead and click on the uh, reflected gradient tool. That's the one that's uh, where it does like the bar. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to the to where the bottom of your name, like the bottom line of your name, click on the bottom line and go all the way up to the top, just, just the top part of the letter of your name. And you'll see that it'll create like a little bar behind your name, basically. So again, just click on the bottom of your name and go all the way, click, hold it down, go all the way to the top of your name and let go. Oh, yeah. And you should have that little stripe that looks just like that. Right All right. In the next two minutes, I'm going to show you guys the most magical, wonderful, awesomest thing about ever about Photoshop. All right. So everybody's got a nice gradient. Cool. Excellent. Badass. Super sweet. Great. All right. Excellent. All right. Cool. All right. Now then, just like you were saying, Chris, yes, how do we select out that chunk now because like I said if we were to export this actually let's do that let's go ahead and press file save control s and now go back over to Photoshop real quick and look at our photo look at our photo or uh, it's okay. our premiere now all of a sudden now we can't see our video our video is gone where our video go oh no all right so let's go back to Photoshop again and this time all right now this is this is a this is the definitive sneaky trick about Photoshop all right I've watched a lot of people use the eraser tool and that's a horrible way of doing things what we want to do is we want to select, okay, uh, I know, um, uh, Giselle, yours is a little different. You don't have white up there. You have a green color going on. That's totally cool. Just, just when I say white, I'm talking about that color. All right. So what we want to do is we want to select all of this, this big dead space up here, and we want to select all the space down here. But if we just, if we, like I said, if we pick the eraser tool and we just sit here and start to erasing it, like, uh, it's going to take forever and it's stupid. Don't do that. So what you want to do is you're going to go to the eyedropper tool. We haven't used this one yet. Uh, and again, you can pull that up just by pressing the I key on your keyboard. And what I want you to do is go ahead and click on that space up there. That's that 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 empty space. If it's white, it's white. If it's a different color, it's a different color. But once you click on that color, you're going to notice that, that color has been selected now. And now what I want you to do is go up to Select up at the top up there, and go to Color Range. And then just go ahead and press OK. All right, and what that's going to do is that's going to automatically select anywhere on this entire thing that that color appears. It's going to select it. All right, how are we looking? How are we looking? Beautiful. How are we looking? Perfect. Excellent. All right, so now that you once you've got that selected, just go ahead and press the delete key on the keyboard, and it's going to take all that extra background stuff out for us, right? Cool. And then we're just going to go Control S, and then let's take a peek at it in Premiere. Yeah, mine's, mine's still a little. Because uh, uh, cause, yeah, because you see, because we have because we have that big gradient. So let's go to uh, go back to Photoshop real quick. Same thing, different name. There you go. Oh, okay, so we need a neon the rectangle layer at the bottom. Go press the leaky. Now save it and now look at it. All right, guys, we are just about out of time here. All right, so let's, let's go back to Photoshop again. Okay, yeah, we didn't save. File save. Now we open a photo for Premiere. When you flip back over there, there it goes. Cool. All right, go ahead and save your Premiere documents. Go ahead and save your Photoshop documents if you would. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and close these down. And we're going to call it a day for today. I was going to say, felt cool? It's cool, simple, yeah. easy? All right. So like I said, that can be used to build all kinds of things. Um, to give you guys an idea of, of how this all comes together, just for the fun of it, uh, thanks for watching us online.